As I think you all know, uh, we were supposed to have our uh, yearly Gideon emphasis this morning. I forgot to mention him when we had prayer, but as you see, our speaker was supposed to be Mr. Mitch Keith from the Gideons. And just hours ago, I got a call from him telling me that he would not be able to come this morning. His stepson had overdosed just hours before that. So I'm sure you all understand why he didn't come today. Uh, I should have, well, with so many things I forget these days, I failed to mention him during our time of prayer. So I think we ought to just bow our heads right now and pray for him and his family. Uh, that, well, any of you that ever been through anything, even close to that, you know what, what a trying time this would have to be. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you that we can intercede for those in need. And Lord, uh, we're sorry for what has befallen the family of Mitch Keith this morning. And Lord, uh, we just pray that you will be with him and his family, especially his stepson. We actually, he was in such a hurry, I, I don't even know if his stepson is still alive or if he died. So I just pray in whatever way that help is needed that you would give help right now to them. Cross the mouths, Lord. If they're in the, a hospital right now or wherever, I just pray that you would give them help and strength like only Jesus can. And for this, we'll thank and praise you. Amen. We will not be receiving a, an offering for the Gideons at the end of our service, so just disregard what you have in there. He told me, he said, I will try to reschedule with you to come another Sunday. So uh, hopefully uh, that will work out and we will have him down the road. Uh, Waylon had very little notice this morning, and he is, uh, matter of fact, I wasn't even sure if we were going to have anybody speak, maybe just have a time of prayer, but he said he thinks he's ready a little bit. Uh, but So you understand, he's only had a little bit to be ready. So, uh, uh, but I'm sure it'll be better than one of the pastors that used to be at my mom and dad's church. A big sermon, a long one for him, was five minutes. Most of them didn't last five minutes. So, Waylon's going to come and you pray for him as he does share. Morning again, everyone. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, um, you know, when the pastor called this morning at 6.30, I, uh, well, I, I got to figure out my phone, because it's supposed to ring, because we don't have a landline anymore, but then he called Steph's phone, and that was fine, that's the, and that's what we've kind of used as our, as our main house phone, and uh, he first asked me if I had anything, and I said, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't, um, I always have a couple ideas, you know, I have sitting in a folder on my computer that I might have started looking at, or, and, and I just lately have been so busy, I meant to have something ready, and I just didn't, but I got up this morning, started getting around, and, and I sat down, and I said, Lord, if you want me to speak this morning, let's take something that you've, you've already laid on my heart to start to, to take a look at it, and I, I went down through the folder, and, and some, this just jumped out at me that, that I had given it a little more thought than some, anything else I probably had on my, on my computer, and so I started sitting working on it. I said, Lord, if I finish this before I have to jump in the shower real quick and get to church, I'll preach. If not, we're not we won't have a sermon this morning. Jeff's because I didn't know if Jeff had something or not, because he said he was gonna talk to Jeff too. So so I sat here and I was I was just typing away and and, and you know said, Lord, again, if you want something, give it to me, or if not, we won't have anything this morning. So uh, that's how it went. And I looked at the clock and it was five after nine. I said, I'm gonna jump in the shower now, let's go. <laughs> and so I got around. But again, uh, I'm thankful that the Lord doesn't care how well prepared I am this morning. I'm thankful that the Lord provides regardless. And he, 
He blesses us. I, I, I want to tell you, you know, I, I said it a couple of times. I'm so blessed that we're coming back and starting Wednesday night, even if it's going to be a little different, you know, than we, we're going to be used to. I, I went to the Christian bookstore this week looking for something because we, we said we were going to start this week with Wednesday night service, and I said we're going to do a Bible study. So I started looking through the Bible studies they had there in the section, and I found a couple that I thought were really good. But then this one on the armor of God just stuck out to me as I started looking through what it was covering and how it was covering it. And I said, Lord, I think this is what you want us to start with. I said, and then after that, we'll go from there. But um, the Lord provided that, and, and Jeff and I are going to take turns on Wednesday nights doing that. So I'm glad that the Lord provides. He blesses us. He, you know, last Sunday with Faith Promise, you know, again, we thought we hadn't made it. But then I, I asked someone walking out, hey, did, there were people who would put in the week before when it was in the bulletin, did we count those? We're like, no, where are they at? And we went looking for them, and they were back there in the drawer. And so the Lord provided there as well. So again, the Lord always provides. And I want to praise him and thank him for that. This, oh, again, not having anything to do with the sermon or anything this morning. This past week, I went on a um, pastors and wives retreat. Now, I'm not the pastor, but I represented our church, and Steph and I did, and with um, the Painter family. And it was a blessing. It was such a blessing to be there and to be ministered to as well as the fellowship that we had. We had time of prayer. We had time of singing and worship together as well as a few other things and, and then just some downtime to spend. You know, we, we had it at the Christian Retreat Center in East Waterford where we've always had our winter retreat there with the teens. And it was a nice nostalgic time. I took the, the men on a midnight hike in honor <clears throat> in memory of Junior Smith, uh, the way he always took us on that hike. And it was a wonderful time. But it, again, the Lord provided for that, blessed that time uh, for all who were there. Uh, and so again, the Lord always provides. And, and I want to thank the Lord for what he provided here this morning. And I hope that you are blessed by something that's, that's in here this morning. So as we get started, turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke. I'm going to read a short section of Scripture here, a very familiar section of Scripture. Luke 6 is where we're going to be at. I'm going to read just a few verses. I'm going to read verses 46 through 49, the wise and foolish builders. Uh, once you've found that, if you are able, please stand with me out of respect for God's word, and we'll read together, or I'll read uh, uh, Luke 6, 46 through 49. I think I'm going to start to need my, bring my readers. I'm having a little trouble seeing the words anymore. I haven't used the readers now. <sighs> Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not what I say. I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. Bow your heads with me, please. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, it is truth. Lord, we ask that you would just bless it to our hearts, use it to encourage us and strengthen us. Just speak to us this morning. Through all that is said and done, may you get all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Our kids played with it when they were very little. Daniel also likes to play with it. I played with it when I was a kid. And I still occasionally play with it every once in a while if Daniel has it out. It's that colorful clay that comes in a little round can. You know what that stuff's called, right? Play-Doh. Play-Doh. You can take that stuff and squeeze it into something. You can roll it out. You can make it flat. You can turn that substance, that sweet-smelling substance. Oh, I can, I, can just, I can picture the smell right now. You can smell Play-Doh when I say the word. If you've played with Play-Doh, you can just... You can picture that smell right now, Play-Doh, right? You can turn it into almost any shape you want it to be, whether it's flat or rolled or squeezed or, you know, before I was growing up, you just had the Play-Doh. 
When my kids were growing up, they had all this other stuff. You could put the Play-Doh into something and squeeze it, and it would come out. They had the barber shop. Everybody remember the barber shop? There was a little guy in the seat, and when you would squeeze it, the Play-Doh would come out his hair. It would all come out his hair. And you would cut it. Give you had little plastic scissors. So you could turn Play-Doh into almost anything. For a toy, this is great. It's awesome for as, as a toy. But if you were to use Play-Doh to describe an individual, might not be so good. Might not be so good. My sermon title this morning is Play-Doh or Rock. Play-Doh or Rock. Unfortunately, the, there are way too many people that you and I both know who are just like Play-Doh. And I'm not talking about the nice smell. I'm not talking about the wonderful color. I'm talking about they just change with whatever the way the wind blows. Whatever comes their way, they are shaped, especially emotionally, by whatever hits them. They have no strength to them. They have no so solid substance to them. Whatever comes their way and presses into them shapes them and changes them in the moment. You never know if they're going to be up or down, happy or miserable, negative or positive, loving or even selfish depending on what their day is like. It, that you never know because they allow their emotions to drive everything they do. They don't have any solid ground in, to stand on. They don't have any solidness in them to stand up to whatever it is they're facing. They are Play-Doh. They're smushy. They're weak. And that's not how any Christian is supposed to live. We are called to live on the solid rock of Jesus, Amen. on the solid foundation of Jesus, who here would like to build a foundation for their house out of Play-Doh? <laughs> Nobody. Yet many Christians, their foundation is nothing more solid than Play-Doh, unfortunately. They, the world comes in and culture and society comes in and tells them how they're to think and how they're to feel on whatever the subject may be. And they bend to its will, to society's will, to culture's will, instead of standing strong on God's solid rock, on his word. As long as you run your life based on how you're feeling at the moment, you're going to be much, not much stronger than Plato in how you live. Constantly changing shape, constantly adapting your life to the situation you're in at that moment instead of shaping it by your Christian faith. Instead of living it by faith in God. And that's never a good way to live. No Christian should ever live that way. We understand when the world lives that way because they have no solid foundation. They, have, they don't have the word of God to stand upon. We understand when they bend to the whims and wills of society. Whatever is coming their way today, whether it be homosexuality being normalized, whether transgenderism being normalized, or whether it's critical race theory or any of this, other, dividing us all by the shades of our skin, whatever it is, comes their way, they want, to stand, they want to be woke and they want to be a part of whatever it is. But you know what? When you stand on God's word, it never changes. God never changes. And if you're going to be a Christian, you're not going to be Plato. You're going to be a rock. You are going to be a rock. Amen. See, a person. Let's describe the person who's a rock. There are those people in your life that you've always been able to count on. People, if you look at them, that you know that they are not a thermometer; they're a thermostat. They set the climate instead of the climate changing them. Instead of them reacting to what it, you know what a thermometer does, right? All it does is react to whatever the temperature is. Mm -hmm. A thermostat sets the temperature in the room. That's right. As a Christian, we, depending upon God for our strength, for our endurance, for whatever it is, we need to set the temperature in the room by standing on God's word, by standing firm in him. And see, if you look at Christians in your life, the saints of God that have filled this church, this, this retreat last week was a blessing in many ways. One of the things was, and I'll, I'll just, this has, actually this had nothing to do with the sermon, but it actually just popped into my head. We were sitting there and, and Dave Painter showed me some video that my uncle Jonathan 
in the 50s had, had done some filming. I don't know what he had, an 8 millimeter, whatever, whatever the camera would have been at that day, an 8 millimeter was video that he'd taken. No sound to it, of course. It was definitely uh, not a talkie. <laughs> it was a silent film. But he had asked David 10, 15 years ago to convert it to digital and on DVD. And David Painter was sitting there showing all of us. We were sitting there reminiscing about a lot of us. We were watching all this stuff. And, you know, and my great-grandmother, Eva Glunt, who was a member of this church, who was a pillar in this church for many years, I never met her. She died before I was born. I've only ever seen her in pictures. We're watching this video, and here she comes walking across the screen. And it affected me, like, I, I was like, it just, it jolted me for a second to watch her. And, and what she was doing, she was leading a VBS class out these doors and over here where the swings used to be, where the fellowship hall is today. I guess they were taking, taking the kids outside for a little uh, playtime or whatever during VBS, and she's out there pushing a kid on a swing. And, and it reminded me, and the people in my life who've told me, she was a rock. She was a rock in this church. And what, why I even said that is, you know how many rocks were in, have been in this church, this church, people God used to build this church. People God used to do so many things in this church. People that prayed, people that worked with their hands, people that taught Sunday school class and VBS and led singing and directed choirs and all these things that God used these people in this church. They were a rock. We need to live our lives like a rock and not Play-Doh. We need to serve God here in this church and continue to as a rock as our life is built upon the rock of Christ Jesus. These people we're talking about, rocks. These people, we're, we're, we're calling them a rock. You know why we call them a rock? Rocks never change. They're always the same shape. No matter how tight you take a rock and squeeze it in your hand, you know what? It doesn't give. It doesn't, it doesn't do it. A rock, when you squeeze it, it doesn't change shape. It is still the same solid rock it was when you picked it up. That's what happens to Christians. We will stand the tests of time. We will stand the storms in this, in this life because our life is built on the rock of Christ Jesus. And we are going to be like a rock when we live for him, whether in this church or in our communities, or in our families, we will not be squeezed into the shape of the world. We will not be squeezed into whatever it is society is telling us we must do. Instead, we will stand in the shape that God has designed us to be, in whatever it is. Now, in this life, you are either one or the other. You are going to be Play-Doh or a rock. You all are. I am. We're, I'm either going to be a Plato or a rock, and it depends on what your base, your response. Your respo I'm sorry. It depends on what you base your responses on. The facts, the facts, or your feelings. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been around my grandson Daniel, occasionally he starts to sing. Daniel likes to sing. Facts don't care about your feelings. He sings it all the time. It's from a song. It's from a, it's, it's from a song. If facts don't care about your feelings. And he's singing it. Yeah. Facts don't care about your feelings. Facts are here to stand upon. Facts are here to live by. This is the, what our, our life is to be based upon. Our responses to whatever comes our way in life are to be based upon Christ Jesus. Facts don't care about your feelings. We stand on facts, not feelings. So, going back to our scripture for this morning in Luke 6, here at verse 47, Jesus describes the person who hears my words and puts them into practice as being like a man building a house who laid the foundation on rock. Jesus said the storms would come and shake that, would come and not shake that house. That individual was like a rock. Then he describes a man who hears, he says, here's my words, Jesus is saying, and does, and does not put them into practice, is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and the destruction was complete. That is the Plato person. 
Just whatever comes their way changes them. Whatever comes their way can just totally wipe their, their whole world apart, knock their world down based on feelings and emotions. Again, we all have feelings and emotions. There's nothing wrong with them. We need to feel them. We are God created to be emotional beings. But our emotions should not change who we are and what we stand for. Our emotions are there because we, it, they, they help us to have compassion for others. They help us to, to, their, to feel love for other people. And again, we sometimes need righteous indignation when sin raises its ugly head. So we do need our emotions, all of them. But our emotions can't and shouldn't control us as Christians. God's word should, every time. Those who run their lives on their emotions are vulnerable to everything that comes their way. To everything that comes into their path, they are vulnerable. Not just vulnerable, they're even collapsible because they allow their emotions to just sway them one way or the other or to, to conform them to whatever comes their way. But those who know what God says, who bases their life and their responses on what God's word says, no matter how they're feeling, they are strong, stable, and they are storm-proof. They are storm-proof. When the winds come, we had some winds this week, right? Probably trash cans blowing around and whatever, uh, cha lawn chairs blowing around. If you had those, out, there was some wind coming. But that's, that's nothing like a major storm, like a hurricane or a tornado. When winds come and things happen to us, if you live by your feelings... The storm is going to blow you away. But if you live your life upon God's word as your foundation, you live your life in Christ Jesus, you will be storm-proof as a stone house on a stone-strong foundation on a hill. The storms come, and it's storm-proof. But you know what? Whether you're storm-proof or you're vulnerable comes down to one thing, your choice. Your choice how you're going to live. Are you going to live for Jesus or not? Are you going to live for God or are you going to live for self? It's your choice. You can either go by your feelings or you can live your life by the facts. That is our choice. And I, you know, I pray that we all choose to live by the facts. Live by Jesus. Maybe you've been going your way too much or maybe you've been living your life too much by feelings. But you know, and you know what? Satan just loves that because he can push you around. If you allow your feelings to conform you, if, you, if you're like Plato, Satan will love it that he can push you around. He can push you over here. He can push you into things. Or he can push you out of things that God wants you to do. So don't allow Satan to use your feelings against you. Don't allow Satan to twist and distort your feelings. Because he can do that. He can twist and distort your feelings, but you know what he can't twist and distort? Truth. God's word. You can choose to have your feelings overrule you and what you know to be true, or you can allow God to always be your standard. Allow God's word always to be your foundation and allow God to overrule whatever feelings you're feeling that day. That's where we want to live, where we'll be a rock instead of Plato. And again, it's all your choice. It's all my choice in how we live. Some people, even after they're Christians, even allow their spiritual lives to be run by their feelings without truly being anchored much into God's word. Don't allow that to happen. Make sure your anchor is sure and make sure it is right here in God's word. And then... Your feelings aren't going to blow you all over the place. Your feelings aren't going to just toss you to and fro. Have any of you ever been out on a big boat when the waves toss you to and fro? Yeah, you have. I've never been on a big boat. I've been on little rowboats and some other things, and that was enough for me usually. But if you've ever been out on a big boat on the big water and it tossed you to and fro, that's not a fun place to be. That's not where you want to be. You don't feel safe and secure, right? Well, you know what? When you live your life by your feelings instead of by truth, that's exactly how you live your life, being tossed to and fro in the boat. Don't allow life 
to knock you off your game. Don't allow your feelings to push you away from what you know is right and what is true, okay? Because if we allow God to be our strong foundation, we allow God's truth to be where we anchor ourselves, we'll be secure no matter what storm comes our way, no matter what storm we must face. Even the worst of storms, they may not be pleasant. Our emotions are, may still be there. We may be hurting or afraid or whatever, but you know what? If your anchor is secure in God's word, you, you will not be tossed to and fro. You will not be thrown about. You will stand firm in God's truth, no matter what comes your way. Now, this is for some, maybe even watching on Facebook or maybe on YouTube later or what have you. Maybe you're not sure whether you even belong to Jesus. Maybe you don't even, you're not really sure because you're going on your ever-changing feelings instead of the promises of God. You know, that maybe you don't even know if you're part of, you're, you're, you belong to Christ, okay? But 1 John 3, 5, 13 says what? I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. You may know you have eternal life because you have the truth. That's why it's written down for us. Our society today, even in the church, is saying things about the Bible. Well, I don't know. Man's had his hand in it too much. I can't believe this. I can't believe, I can't believe the sixth day, literal day creation. I can't believe this or whatever. Other, they pick and choose things they don't believe in the Bible. God gave it to us that we might know we have eternal life. And we know that it is the infallible word of God. And the ultimate authority on all, all subjects, all subjects. Amen. Now, that scripture says that's know that you have Jesus, not feel like you have Jesus, right? That's what that scripture is really saying. You know that you have faith, not just feel that you have faith. Now, when you go, if you're married, you, how do you know you're married? How do you know you're married? There was a specific day that you made a conscious decision to commit to your spouse. You made a specific choice to commit to your spouse. Now, if you don't know you got married, then apparently you didn't. You better check what you did if you, if you don't know, right? But again, you know you're married because you made that commitment to God or to your spouse. You know you're a Christian if you made a specific commitment to God to right. make him Lord of your life and you stuck to that commitment, it's if you hold true to God, if you hang on to God, if you stay sure in God's truth, Amen. then you know that you, are, you belong to Jesus Christ. You know you're a Christian. If you've committed yourself to Jesus as your only hope for having your sins forgiven, you are going to heaven and you belong to him if you stay living for him. You stay grounded in God's truth, in God's word, and you maintain that relationship between you and God. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to heaven. You know you are, okay? Now, if there's never been a time when you did that, then you don't belong to him. If you've never committed your life to Christ, if you've never made a specific decision to make Jesus Lord of your life, then you don't belong to him. You're not a Christian and you're not headed to heaven. No matter whatever religion you follow, no matter whatever philosophy you take in or think about or whatever, you don't know Jesus, you don't belong to him, and you're not going to heaven. Mm -hmm. But today you could do that. You, this could be the day that you call Jesus your Lord and Savior. The day that all that changes and your eternal destination then would change as well. Your eternal destination. Right where you are, if you don't know, if you don't know Jesus, you talk to him as your friend, as your Savior. The one who came and died for you. The one who gave his life that you might find forgiveness of your sin. And now, I, we talked about this in Sunday school class this morning. I'm not giving you a sinner's prayer. I'm not telling you a magical formula or a supernatural formula how to get saved. This is just to tell you how you would want to talk to God, right? Just it doesn't don't need these exact words at all, but I'm just going to lay that out real quick for anyone who may need 
to, to anchor themselves in God's truth this morning. It would be something like this. Uh, Jesus, I resign from running my own life. I don't want to be in charge anymore. It took your life to pay for my sins, and then you came out of that grave and resurrected. I'm asking you to come into my life to forgive me and to give me that resurrection power and salvation today. Beginning today, Jesus, I'm yours. That's all you would need to pray today and mean it and mean it and then go forth from this day serving God, living for God. And then you know without a shadow of a doubt you're living for God, you belong to Jesus, and you're headed to heaven. If you prayed that prayer this morning, something similar to that and meant it, welcome into the family of God. There's nothing like being a part of the family of God. I can tell you that for a fact. You'll, ne you'll never regret it. It's just so good to know that you belong to Jesus. It's so good to know that you're going to heaven one day when you either pass from this life to the next or the rapture takes place. It's so, there's nothing like it. If you're going to know anything in this life, know Jesus. If you're ever going to know anything in this life, know God and trust in him no matter what. And it's not because you feel it. You know, you, you, there's going to be some days in your life, even the, the strongest Christian, even the strongest rock, you're not going to feel like a Christian that day. Because emotions are emotions, right? You're gonna, there's days that you're not going to feel it. I don't feel, I don't feel God close today or whatever it is because of whatever. But you know what? Facts don't care about your feelings. Truth is truth. God doesn't change. And if you're saved, you're a Christian, you're headed to heaven, even if you don't feel it today. Even if you don't feel like it today. Keep serving God. Keep living for him. Give him your all. And you don't have to worry about the storms of life blowing you to and fro or blowing you away. Your foundation is Jesus, and you will stand. And one day you will stand in heaven. That's what we're all looking for. If, so if you know you're going to heaven, it's only because of one thing. Jesus. And God's word says it. And God himself says it. So today, don't be Plato. Don't be squished in to the world's mold. Don't be conformed to society's their standards because their standards change every day. Think about society 50 years ago and their standards and think about society's standards today. They change all the time. God's word remains the same. Amen. Don't be Plato. Be a rock. You know what? People will know if you serve God, you're a rock. People you work with will know. People you live with, your family will know. Um, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't know if I mentioned this. I might have mentioned it to my Sunday school class, but a couple weeks ago, this, there is, there's a wonderful relief in your life knowing that you live for God and building a re reputation in your life with everyone around you that you live for God. Here's a little short little to end the sermon. This is this was uh, a couple weeks ago. I was on a call at work. I was on a, it was on a, we called a Webex call. It'd be like a Zoom call. You've seen them where you have a bunch of people on this call. Now nobody's nobody's picture was showing. It was just we were on this phone call and they were showing presentations on the screen. And I think there were 60, 70 some people on this call. And it was the the group I work in at work, but it was the global group. There were people on this call from. JLG McCallsburg, there were people from Hagerstown, there were people from uh, China, there were people from Mexico. It was our global group that was on this call. And our vice president of this group was, was speaking. He was speaking. And he had just started talking, and he was showing a presentation on the screen, and he was talking, and then someone on the call, oh, to back up, usually when we have these group calls, they will mute everybody on the call except for the speaker. Well, they were having some technical difficulties, so they actually rebooted it. And didn't mute everybody. And I think there were some people on the call that didn't realize they weren't muted. Well, I know they did because this is what happened next. Our vice president is talking, and all of a sudden, there is this profanity-ridden statement using the F word come across this call. And it got, there was this pause just for quite a second. Like, the vice president stopped and paused. And, and then he went on. He just went on. Now... 
I instantly get a, a private message on my computer. It says, boy, did that ever sound like you. <laughs> now, then the person said, but I know it wasn't you because of the language it was used. I left that, I don't think anything of it. You know, I just thought that was, I was like, yeah, I, I didn't know how much that person's voice sounded like me. You don't know what your voice sounds like, you know, to other people sometimes. But apparently whoever it was, and I still to this day don't know who it was, they sounded like me. Because apparently about 10 or 15 other people in my group that were there said the exact same thing. They said, wow, boy, did that sound like Whalen? But we knew in that language, that F-bomb got dropped. We know that wasn't him. My boss's boss doesn't really know me very well. He's only, he's only known me slightly for a little while. I've only worked for him for a short period of time. After the call was done, he calls me. And, he's, and I was busy. I, was, I didn't pick up the phone. So then he texted me. He says, I have to ask, was that you that dropped that F-bomb on the call? And I was, just for a second, I got, like, offended. But then I went, then I, went, I typed, I said, well, capital letters, no, that wasn't me. I don't use that type of language. And that was all I said. And he said, well, and he typed back, he says, I thought that was the case. He said, but I, I, I just, I had to ask. Apparently, the, must have, the vice president must have asked to find out who, who said that on the call. <laughs> but, again, there was about 20 people who know me very well on that call who all said the exact same thing. That voice sounded like yours, but we knew it wasn't you because of that language. We know you would never say it. My reputation probably saved me from probably some severe discipline, even though it wasn't my fault, because they knew it wasn't me. Live for God. Be a rock every day. And let God take care of the rest. No matter what it is, whether it's profanity on a call from somebody that sounds like you, or if it's life situations, live for God. Let him be glorified and your reputation will take care of itself like that call did. Because you know what? It takes, it takes a long time to build a reputation. So live for God. Serve God. People will see that. But it only takes a moment to destroy your reputation. A moment of weakness. A moment of being like Plato that could destroy your reputation. Don't be Plato. Be a rock. Serve God. Live the truth. And be a rock today. And you know what? One day, if the Lord tarries, there'll be people in this church talking about you when you were here as the rock that this church was built. You will be the rock there. So I remember when so-and-so, they did this. They came and they, they, they did this in the church and they did that in the church and they, they, they lived for God this way. And they lived. You live for God. Be a rock. Because we are to be an example to others in how we talk, how we live, in all manner, what's the manner of conversation, which means all ways you live, right? Serve God and be the rock and don't be Plato. And never forget, it all comes down to your choice. Will it be feelings or will it be facts? Live for God and be a rock. Stand with me, please. Sure. <laughs> but uh, uh, I know many preachers, including many Nazarenes, who can't preach that good if you give them all week to prepare. So thank you very much, Wayne. And what he shared with us, we all need to heed. And you know, uh, these days, people are trying to destroy all our reputation. Mm -hmm. They're trying to kill us as Christians. What we are and what we stand for. If you don't use the F word and people know that, nobody will believe it if somebody tries to accuse you. Mm -hmm. And all kinds of things. So heed what we heard this morning. We need a good word. Let's bow our heads and we'll join together in a closing word of prayer. Jeff, would you please dismiss us? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we heard this morning. It is a something that each and every one of us need to hear and be reminded.
reminded of on a daily basis mm. that there, we need to stay firm and stand firm on your word, Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, that we will not be blown this way or that way. That we will.